Welcome to Sheena Power Talk Youth Link, where our redeemed, revived, and transformed guests get real and empowering youth. I'm your host, Sheena Lynn Hansen, and I'm so happy to be here on season four, where God is doing an absolutely amazing thing. I just so love Daddy. Daddy is amazing. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's Lord over Power Talk. He's Lord over my life. He's Lord over your life. And we're excited for what he will do and what he has already done. Today, I'm just super, super excited, elated. Oh my God, to have in the room with me, woman of God, Monique Mackenzie. I wanted to say prophetess. I wanted to say pastor, but she's so humble and sweet. She said, just call me woman of God. But you'll hear me call her sure. Auntie Monique. Okay. So go get your aunties, your uncles, your sisters, and your brothers. She will speak a little bit more about her encounters with God that will bless your soul. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Do you want to be a supporter of Sheena Power Talk? Here are ways that you can become a partner to help this ministry grow. Call 876-429-6004 for more information or email Sheena Power Talk, the number one at yahoo.com, paypal.me slash Sheena Power Talk, cash app, dollar sign, I-R-E-N-J-O-H, National Commercial Bank, Sheena Power Talk Limited, St. Jago Shopping Center, Savings Account in Jamaican Dollars, 471-599-794 or in U.S. Dollars, 475-116-305. Sheena Power Talk, making waves, changing lives. Sheena Power Talk. And we are rise and I take over territory. We are break some curses lyrically. We are shake some kingdom literally. Now nah, show Satan no sympathy. Young people make we grow spiritually. Stop war with the neighbor physically. Draw for the Holy Bible daily. Humble I got feet like baby. Tired for see family in a cemetery. Youths them need guidance mentally. Stop abuse young girls sexually. We need Yeshua in a the industry. See it on a try rally you why your destiny. Young girl, keep your identity. Welcome, 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 woman of God. How are you? I am great and I'm blessed to be here. Yes. Uh, this is a dream come true sitting on your platform because I've dreamt it, but I didn't think it would come to pass. It wasn't supposed to be, but God made it Amen. to be. And here we are today, but my husband and I, and it is a pleasure. It is a delight Antoine, to be here today. Thank you so much for being here. I'm happy to meet you. Oh my God. And may I add that you're looking so beautiful. I love your smile. I love your head wrap. Uh, Aunt Monique, sexy twisty. Oh, I'm sorry. Aunt, <laughs> Aunt Monique, I want you to look into the camera and give us five significant things about yourself. Hello, everyone. Five significant things about me. First, I am called. I am chosen. And I desire to be faithful. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a lover of people, and I love the Lord with all my heart. It sounds cliche, but it truly is so. I do love the Lord with all my heart. Amen. She loves the Lord with all her heart, and she's so humble and passionate about Amen. our big God. Amen. Now, woman of God, I believe that the Bible is the foundation of truth. Amen. What is your favorite scripture, and what it means to you? To be honest, I have many, many, many favorite scriptures. Yes. But today, I will venture to say that Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 is one of my most favorites. Yes. Today. Tomorrow it might be something else. Yes. But it goes like this. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. 
Yeah. Wow. Amen. Amen. I love the scripture that you chose. You. Oh my God, trust in your, the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Amen. Woman of God, yes, thank you for that scripture. And I want you to write that down because that one is for you. Trust in the Lord. Lean not unto your own understanding. Now, Auntie Monique, I want to know who was Auntie Monique before salvation? Uh... I have always been a very passionate person. Yes. A little misguided, maybe, but passionate. Yes. Always loved truth. Always a warrior. Yes. Always friendly. Yes. Always loving. Mm -hmm. Caring. Caring. Mm -hmm. And um, one who, I grew up in a house of six children myself included, and two parents. My parents were very strict. Yes. And we were never allowed to go outside and play with neighbors or anything. And I grew up here in Jamaica. I left Jamaica when I was about 13. And um, I would always want to go meet neighbors and friends, and we were not allowed to do it. So every now and then I'd sneak out and go find friends. Yeah. But I always loved to go to church. Mm. And so the neighbors would take us to church, and I fell in love with Christ at a very early age. And there was one particular song, Because He Lives. Mm. It's one of the ones that just always tugged at my heartstring. Yes. And I would always want to go to church just to hear them sing that song. And I fell in love with Jesus. Yes. And I've been on that journey ever since. Hallelujah. So, and I never strayed too far off the path. Yes. Of course, I, you know, you grow up and you wanted to go to the clubs and to the parties and to do some things. And I remember going to a club one night in my early 20s and almost got killed because I moved someone's jacket because my feet were hurting and I wanted to sit down. Mm -hmm. And I moved the jacket so I could sit and the person was rude and would have shot me that night mm -hmm. because of anger. Yeah. And... Then I had another experience in another, in another club-like situation, but it was outside and there was a stampede. And again, I almost lost my life. We all had to disperse and run from each other. And I said to myself, why would you be found mm -hmm. in these type of environments that would seek to take your life? I don't belong here. Yes. I would get, I would bathe, get dressed up, put on pretty clothes, get your hair done, do all that you had to do, and then go into these places. I'd come out smelling like smoke. And I said, but what woman of, what child of God is found in this type of environment? Mm -hmm. And so that because of those experiences, I began to loose the hold of the world and began to come to know the Lord and to serve him and find myself in his presence more than out in the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. wow. Yeah. And, and, and the journey continued Continue. ever since that. And being so passionate yeah. about Christ, you have had a lot of encounters I've, with him. I've had and that's many. where I want to take the show today Amen. on some of your encounters with God. Can you tell me one of the first ones? Yes, I can. Um, well, first, let me say my mom, who is uh, deceased, but she always saw something great in me. Mm -hmm. Don't think God told her the purpose of what my life would be, but he said to her, your daughter is going to be great, and she always poured it into me. And I recall along the journey, I wanted greatness. I was heading to Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, not so. Hollywood is not where I want you, but I want you to come work for me. And so he redirected my steps. I lived in New York. I moved from New York, moved to Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, and that's where I now reside. But one of the first encounters of me really getting a hold of this big God. Years ago in New York, I was sitting on the subway, riding on the train, heading into Manhattan for work in my very early 20s. Might have been 2021. And there was a demon-possessed man that got, got on the subway, mm. and he started to beat up the Caucasian race that was on the train, mm -hmm. beat 
raped, I mean angry and saying, you raped my people, you killed my people. And he was just angry and bitter. And I was sitting right next to him, as close as you and I are, Sheena, maybe even a little closer. Because in New York, you're like stuck together on the train. Yeah. And I was petrified. Fear was gripping me. And I was like, my God, I can't move. The train is packed. And here is this man. And he is just beating this person. That demon possessed man stopped what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He walks in front of me. He looks me dead in the eye and he says, be at peace. Mm -hmm. I cannot hurt you. You are protected. All right. That was my, one of my first encounters. Whoa. And I was like, I was, I was like, what? And that, it has never left my mind. Whoa. And he went back. He spoke to me, and then he went back to what he was doing, which is to continue to attack the man. When the train got into the station, nobody else moved but me. I jumped up, and I ran off the train, and I said, don't move the train, conductor. Don't move the train. There's a madman on the train. And that was one of the very first experiences. Mm. Another of such an experience was my child, uh, my son, Emmanuel, was born at 27 weeks gestation, mm -hmm. seven months. But I had to have him via C-section. I was sick unto death. Mm -hmm. I had every known disease for a pregnant person and I was to die. Mm -hmm. I went to my mother's house one Saturday of the 27 weeks of pregnancy. She had six children. And she looked at me and she said, I walked through the door and she started to scream and to cry. Mm -hmm. And she called my dad. She says, come in here, come in here. My dad's name is Winston. Come in here, come in here. Oh my God, we're gonna lose her, she's gonna die. And I said, mommy, what are you talking about? And she said to me, I have had six children and you are going to die. Look at you, you're sick. But I had just come from the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. And the doctor said everything was fine, right. mm -hmm. but it wasn't so. And so she asked me to go to the doctor and I said to her, Mommy, I won't go today, but I promise you come tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. I will go to the doctor. I went to the doctor the next morning as I promised her and thank God I listened. They had to rush me from Queens, New York to Beth Israel Hospital in Manhattan, one of the top notch um, hospitals. Mm -hmm. and. Take that child from me. Yes. He should have died and I should have died. He was one pound, eight ounces. Mm -hmm. And I looked at, I mean, I didn't see him for about two weeks because I was so sick unto death fighting for my life yes. that I didn't see him. But when I did see him, I was a little angry. I was yeah. like, my God, Lord, of all the children my mommy had, yeah. I'm the one that brings this. What is this? This is not a child. I didn't even recognize. He was so tiny, could right. fit in the palm of my hand. Oh my God. And so I had a reckoning with God. I said, Lord, honestly, I'm the one that's serving you. How could you do this to me? And so he spoke to me through many that he was going to be great and he was going to, because I honored him by going through with the pregnancy and trusting in him, he was going to bring him through this ordeal and to strengthen my faith. Mm. And so I was strengthened. Mm. My son today will be 28 years old. Whoa. He is a fine young man. Yes. And God used that experience to draw me in a little closer. Yes. Another encounter. Because I love the encounters. God is such a wonderful God. Yes. And so I was married at the time, then with the son, with my son. And I went through a very traumatic divorce mm -hmm. um, and God spoke to me all through that divorce all before prior to the divorce he was giving me signs all along the way yeah. to leave mm -hmm. and I said Lord this can't be you I love you and you love me and you can do anything you can move any heart you can change anybody mm -hmm. surely you don't want me to break this marriage up and so and the, the marriage was broken and I spent about seven years trying to recover, yeah. but the, I kept going deeper with God in spite of the pain. I would show up at every prayer meeting. Yeah. I would show up with God. I would show up at all the services that we had, anything where God was, I wanted to be there. Yeah. And one day, 
about seven years. I, every lunchtime, Sheena, I made a covenant with the Lord. Yeah. I would I would get up and I'd walk every day for my lunch hour, and I found a tree in Atlanta. And I would walk to that tree. I said, Lord, I'm going to meet you at this tree at 1.15 every day. Mm -hmm. And you and I are going to talk. We just I'm come there and I pray to you. And he met me there every day, every five, every work day, yeah. I would walk there. And so one day he just showed up in a dream. He told me, I'm going to restore unto you what the canker worm has stolen. Yeah. And he gave me a dream of a man taller than this, as tall, almost reaching all the way to the sky. Yeah. And this love that was emanating from this man, I thought it was Jesus himself, because nobody else mm -hmm. could love me like that. Right. And the love came flowing down into my heart, and I woke up rejoicing. And then I washed the man's head, and I washed his feet, and we linked our arms together, mm -hmm. and we walked off in a garden. And I didn't know what the world that dream meant. That, that dream meant. Mm -hmm. And so I went to work. At first I called my son in and I said, Emmanuel, I just met Jesus himself. Because nobody could love me like this. Mm -hmm. This is not even, this got to be Jesus. So nevertheless, I went to work later on that day, that morning. And I went to a friend of mine, a co-worker. And I said to her, I just had the most beautiful dream. And I don't understand it. She said, tell me what the dream is. Mm -hmm. I said, this is the dream. I dreamt I washed this man's head. I washed his feet and we linked our arms together and we got married. No, no, I didn't say married. We linked our arms together. And she said to me, you will be married. And in mm -hmm. six months, I was married. But before, before, during, leading up to the marriage, he gave me dreams and visions of this man coming. Mm, so you saw your husband? I, I didn't see his face, mm -hmm. but I saw a man coming on it was on a vehicle it looked like it could have been a plane or a, or a um a bus but i saw him coming in the dream but i never saw his face yeah. when he came to the house and met me and i'm just fast forwarding for the sake of time mm -hmm. and i washed his head and i washed his feet and when he turned to the side profile is when i knew that was my husband because i knew i saw him Mm -hmm. in the dream prior. Mm -hmm. And so that is just one or two or three of many, many oh, encounters. Whoa. One most recent, and I'm asking all of you to hold me accountable for this one, because this one is big. Yes. Over the Thanksgiving holiday, I encountered a woman of God, and I went to her house for her to help me pray for someone who was in distress. Right. And I get to her house and she says to me, stop, God is not here to talk about this person that you've come to pray for. Right. God, is, God wants an audience with you right now. And so she began to speak into my life. Mm. She started to tell me about the great things that God wants to do with me and through me. And she said, tell your husband to sit down and hear what thus said the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so he sits there and she's telling him of the greatness and it all begins on the continent of Africa. Now you and I have had this conversation. Whoa. When your feet touch the ground, greatness is set for you. Mm -hmm. And I always felt it, Sheena. Mm -hmm. I've always felt the greatness. And she said it. He says, God has given you a portion of power that has not yet been revealed. And it will be revealed at the appointed time. Wow. It's funny you mentioned Africa because this young lady, for the second, twice, she said to me, you know the Lord tell me to tell you so that you should go to Africa. And I said, I was saying to myself, like, honestly, Auntie Monique, oh my God, Richard Africa, like, I didn't, I, I didn't regard what she said to me. I didn't regard what this young lady said to me. Mm. And then for a while went off again. I thought about it for a minute, but then I said, like, there's no way. And then she came back and she said, I don't know, but do I keep up impressing this on my heart that there's work for you to do in Africa? I mean, so where should I get that from? 
you not know, understand. Yeah. But then, woman of God, you came mm -hmm. with the same message. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're a woman mm -hmm. of God. You know? And I'm saying, but it's like, it looks, it's not impossible. Mm -hmm. But from where I'm at now, and this could be my flesh talking, I would do that. But from where I'm at now, I'm like, how oh, is this going to happen? Yeah. But I keep getting up dreams of Africa. But I just don't know, you know? He has a way he will do it. Yes. Sheen, I'm here yes. talking to you. Yes. It's not like it's so far away yes. that it can't happen. But if God has ordained it, and even prior to the lady saying what she said, yes. I have dreamt myself in the motherland. Yes. I have been before a sea of people. Mm -hmm. So she just came to confirm what God has said. Yeah. And so you've heard it, the Africa thing more than yes. that. we've talked about it. Yes. And so, yes. So those are some of the encounters. Well, when I got, as you gave us these three encounters, persons are watching you right now yes, and they're saying, how do I get to that place? I, I don't dream dreams. I don't hear the voice of God. And quite frankly, I don't even have anybody around me that's hearing God that can tell me that God give me a word. What do I do? I want an encounter. I want to hear Jesus. I want to dream. What would you encourage them? Power gang. <laughs> this is what I would say to you. First, you must believe. Yes. Believing God is everything. You're not here in this world by yourself. You didn't just show up here, osmosis. God has designed your life, orchestrated it for such a time as this. First thing, believe. Then develop a relationship with the creator of the universe. Ask him, Yahweh, if you are real, Reveal yourself to me. Do something special. Make a date with him every day, if you will. Say at 7 o'clock every day, I am coming to meet you. Set a time and keep the date with the creator who has put the breath in your nostrils. And watch God do great things. And whatever he has told you, through the word of the living God, through the Bible, begin to read your Bible, begin to sing and to pray and watch the great God of the universe who loves you so much show up in your life. He is faithful to accomplish that which he has ordained for your life. Start there and you will see great things. Oh, wow, beautiful. Start there. Now, woman of God, let's talk about just challenges in serving God. I know sometimes you believe God for a thing and, and, and then it looks delayed. And how, how you keep being faithful after being delayed times and times again. Do we forget about the promise? Do we stop praying? Do we stop showing up? Encourage us. Tell us. Power again. Again. God is not a man but. that he should lie. Yes. If God speaks a word, he will bring it to pass. Truth be told, it is never in your timing. Mm -hmm. It is always in his season at the appointed time, he will bring it to pass. So on the days when you feel as if God has not heard you, Dig your heels in a little deeper. Mm. Go a little deeper with your experience and tell him, you know, God, boy, I don't feel like today you're going to show up for me. I've been waiting for a long time for whatever it is you're believing God for. Yes. But do not lose faith and hope and confidence in the creator of the universe. And even as I'm saying that, I'm thinking of Abraham, who was 100 years old, and his wife was, what, 98. And God made them a promise that he would bring a seed, he would bring seed out of his loins. He did not, he said, what? And his wife, Sarah, laughed at God when the angel came to deliver the message. Mm -hmm. Do not, do not doubt God. 
Again, believing God is everything. Faith is everything. And he said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move great mountains. That's right. Mm -hmm. Show God that you mean business. If he speaks it, if you hear it, if your heart is quickened, do not let anybody rob you of that experience and that encounter that your God wants to give to you. He has done it for me and he will do it for whosoever will trust him and believe him and obey him. Amen. Woman of God, separate and apart from your, your encounters, what developed this confidence in Christ over the time? What developed that? That's so rich. That's a very deep question. When you see the world around you crumbling, mm. when you see that men and women, for the most part, yeah. cannot be trusted, yes. then you've got to trust somebody. Yes. So you go to the creator of the heavens and the earth, and you tell him, you read the Bible, you bring back the scriptures to him, repeat his words back to him, mm -hmm. because he is not a liar. Yeah. Men and women, boys and girls will lie and cheat and deceive you. But the great God of the universe is not such. Yeah. He is a man of integrity. Right. He can be trusted. Yes. Put your confidence in God and God alone. Mm. Oh my God, I love that one. Put your confidence in God and God alone. God, God, God. Woman of God. Yes, ma'am. We see the church today. You just mentioned we see the world crumbling. The church lacks reverence. Yes. Repentance now, when you preach it, people are offended, can't talk to them no more. You yourself is a minister of the gospel. Yes. You have your, your, your ministry. What would you want to see right now back in the body of Christ? Very good question. Let me first give you a vision that God gave me last year. Sure. And the vision is this. I was flying over in the sky. He allowed me to see the world. And he, truthfully, he zoned in on Jamaica mm. in the vision. And he said to me, Monique, go and tell my people that I am sealing the 140 and 4,000 as we speak. I am almost finished sealing the 140 and 4,000. Mm -hmm. And many of you might not know who they are, but I want to tell you who they are before I leave this platform today. Yes, and I want to tell you that what must be seen in the body of Christ today is that we must return to godliness. Yes. We must be commandment keeping people. Yes. We must do what God has required of us. He will accept no less. If you are in a body of Christ that you do not feel as if God is present, then you're in the wrong place. Yeah. When you go into the house of worship, you must feel the reverence of the Most High God. You must walk in and you must feel as if God is there because he is there to meet you. So if that is not happening, brothers and sisters in Christ, you are not in the right place. If you walk into a church building, and the church is not the building, but if you're walking in communal worship, reverence must be there. The Most High God must be felt. And you also, as a Christian, usher God in when you show up. Yes. You feel the presence of God. You change the atmosphere when you show up. So start with yourself. Yes. First and foremost, give God what he has asked you for. Mm -hmm. And each one of us, as the body of Christ, will bring about the church. But if you are not getting it from the pulpit, you be it. Be the change that you want to see. You set the right example and others will fall in line. And if not, then move on and go start a ministry. Do what God has ordained for you to do.
because he is calling us as individuals. And then he will what? Zion will see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. He will have a body of believers. Let me just quickly tell you about Revelation 14. And I'm going to allow you to do that right after the commercial break. Please be reminded to like, share, leave a comment, and subscribe. Every time you like the video, you tell YouTube that this is a very interesting program. And YouTube will send it out to different countries and different people. And that's how you get to support me. Sheena Powatak. Hey Power Gang, remember to get your book on Amazon today, today, today. No other day but today you can get it in Kindle form and you can get it in paperback form. And if you are in Jamaica and you want a copy of this amazing book, The Crown and the Cross, listen to me. Call me at 1-876-429-6004. Listen Power Gang, you must have one of these books. Come on now, Crown and the Cross. Devil must know we no worry. We are warrior, glory carrier. We break down every barrier. Spear the goat and any blood can carry a holy ghost. One can tan tan carry a. Stay a for the chopper and them dalia. Stay in a school, Chantal, Bree and Talia. Load the road, Sean, David and Maria. Serve the Lord that will make life merrier. Welcome back, welcome back. You already know Auntie Monique is in the building. She share her encounters, what we'd like to see in the church. How can you get closer to God? And we're here talking about revelation right now. Listen to me, take these things very serious. God is coming back for a people that has really and truly repented, that has really and truly mean him, mean God well as you serve, mean him well. Do have one foot in and one foot out, God desire holiness and righteousness amen. woman of god go ahead amen amen i want to just admonish the body of christ this afternoon or whenever you're watching this um uh program to let you know that there's a burden on my heart for the people of god in these closing hours of probation I know I'm here in Jamaica and I'm enjoying myself. I see buildings going up. I mean, one house bigger than the next. People are eating and drinking and merrymaking to the height. And many don't even want to hear that there is a God who is sealing his people in these closing hours of probation. Where we find ourselves today in the church is in the book of Revelation. That means the, the sealed book is now revealed. God, in the book of Revelation 14, is sealing a people, a special army that will go out through the ends of the earth to bring in the great multitude that no man can number. And what that means is, like you have an army here in Jamaica, or you have an army, a military might in the U.S., or wherever you find yourself around the world, that special group of people that do great things, God is about to do great exploits in these closing hours of probation. And it tells you in the book of Revelation 14, John on the Isle of Patmos saw in vision right down to where we are today. And it says, and I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. I want to stick a pin here and say to you that it is not just a hundred and forty and four thousand that will be saved. What I am saying is God has an army. And if you and I are listening to the words of God today, it should be your desire to be in that army. Many will sleep in the dust, but the 144,000 are living saints that will never die. They will live to see God come through the clouds of heaven. And if you are in the church endeavoring to serve God, it should be your desire to receive that seal of the living God in your forehead. Because if not, then God is going to have to what? move you out of the way.
He is recruiting 144,000 footmen that will be greater than Christ himself. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. When Christ was in the earth, he did wondrous miracles. He did mighty works. And those who make up this number will do greater works than Christ himself did. Mm -hmm. And don't deny yourself the opportunity of serving God in all righteousness. Put away sin, self, and the enemy so that you too can receive the seal of the living God in your forehead. One final encounter. Yes, God has spoken to me personally. Yes. And he has said to me, I have called you before the foundations of the earth were laid to be numbered among the 140 and 4,000. So if God can do it for me, he can do it for you as well. Read all about the 144,000 found in the book of Revelation uh, 14, as well as Revelation 7. Don't have enough time to get into it now. But this is where you should be focusing on today. Seek out and search out who this army is so that you can be recruited into God's army. Amen. 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 And that's what that's what we're calling an undiluted gospel straight out of the word. Amen. Let me tell you, woman of God, I'm just going to ask you to pray for us just before you leave. Okay. You could not just not pray for us. Okay. Pray for us. All right. Most high and eternal God, the privilege is ours to bow in your presence even at this hour. Nothing in our hands we bring but strictly to the love, your glorious love that you have for us, the love that knows no bounds yes. for humanity. You want to save us. You sent your only begotten son, Yeshua of Israel, to come into planet Earth to die so we can have an opportunity to be saved. Amen. Father, breathe upon us. Yes. Your sweet Holy Spirit, Rekindle in us a love for righteousness and holiness. Amen. Lord, we cannot do it without you. But every man must come to know you for his and herself. We cannot look to any other. We must be righteous examples, yes. But this walk is an individual, personal walk. And you have called us. And anyone under the sound of my voice, Father, is because you have ordained it so. That they too will come and hear the good news. The gospel. Working it out each and every day in their lives. Dying to self. Putting away sin. We must put away sin. We cannot stand in your presence in sin. Help us, Lord. To be a righteous and holy people. Begin with me, begin with Sheena and everyone here and all of you viewers online. Give your hearts to the Most High God. He wants to use you. He died to save you and he died to save me. And so Most High God, under the unction of your Holy Spirit, I pray for revival and reformation in each of our lives so that we can meet you in peace Help us, Father, not to eat and drink to excess and to put away the love of the world so that we can see your face and see it in peace. Mm -hmm. Lord, only you can do it for us. Father, only you can change us and only you can transform us. Begin the work in us again afresh. We yield our hearts anew to you, saying Yahweh, Take our hearts and make it yours. And may we not miss out on the great opportunity to fulfill your perfect purpose in our lives so that we can reign and live with you throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity is my desire and plea for all under the sound of my voice in the great and matchless name of Yeshua, our King. Amen, amen. amen. and amen. Amen and amen. amen. And to Monique, let me tell you, I want to say to somebody, if you're listening right now and you're not saved, 
Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Say yes today, because every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Get shape, find a Bible-believing church, and get ready for the second coming of the Lord. Woman of God, I want to thank you so much. And I also would like you to share your social media platforms. Is that okay? Oh, do you remember? Sure. If not, I could just put it on screen. Yes, yes, please do okay. that. So I will have on screen all our social media platforms. Auntie Money, I love you. I love you. Thank you for supporting me. You know what's funny about Auntie Money? Auntie Money is a real supporter. And she's coming all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. Number one. <laughs> you know, I, let me tell you, like, she's always been a real supporter and a real motivator. Even when I didn't believe in something, she didn't show, like, you're not going to lose faith on that because what God says is what God says. And she has been watching, she has been supporting, and many persons that even came to the show and persons that are watching would have known that, you know, God has been using her to change life. I thank God for her and I appreciate you, woman of God. Thank you. I love you. I love I'm you. Excited for you. See you down. <laughs> in the motherland right africa here we come uh, it's a wrap <laughs> she not power talk hey power gang remember to get your book on amazon today 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 no other day but today you can get it in kindle form and you can get it in paperback form and if you are in jamaica and you want a copy of this amazing book the crown and the cross listen to me call me at 1-876-429-6004 listen power gang you must have one of these books come on now crown and the cross Hey beauties and cuties, thank you so much for being a part of Sheena Power Talk Youth Link. I trust that your soul is edified, Satan is terrified, and God is glorified. If you want to be a part of this amazing move, this divine move, you can always call me or contact me on any social media handles. Don't keep that story to yourself. Let it out. Let yourself be free and free somebody else. Share your story today on Sheena Power Gang. Listen to me, Power Team. Power Gang, we are called an eruption in the earth. We are called for revival. And God has set the nigga and broke out in our life. In Jesus' name, let it be well. God bless you. And please remember, if you do want to sow, if you do want to help this ministry monetary, you can always contact me. You can always get me through cash up or other different means like Western Union, MoneyGram, anything and any way you want to sow and make an offering to what God is doing i would really appreciate it there are things that we need as we develop and we trust that you will be generous to us as the lord will lead you thank you so much for making it sheena power gang you don't know how big things are going to sheena power gang and power gang gonna lead god bless you god keep you